Oh, I'm so glad you're here. We're going to cover some subjects today that are pretty heavy. Uh, Subjects that came to me uh, late, late, late at night. These are one of those moments where, you know what, your dreams wake you up this time around. You have to listen to them because something is being shared. And the question is, are you shoving your dreams aside or are you embracing them to learn from them? I'm really fascinated with the scenes that are brought to life inside our dreams. From the music to the characters, the imagery, the storyline. Research reveals that dreams are a combination of early memories and the most recent and everything in between. But I got to stop you right there. Think of your most recent dream last night or maybe even 25, 30 minutes ago. All that was featured inside that dream. Was it truly a particle of your memories? Remember, they they said early memories or the most recent and everything in between. What you dreamt about, was it something that came from a memory? Was it a particle? Around three o'clock this morning, I was blown away by the presence of a mental world that woke me up so early in the morning. Oh, yeah, I had questions, mainly because I've never been to this place that this dream vividly placed inside my thoughts. What if we have lived this life before? More research shows memories of past lives manifest themselves as reoccurring dreams. Even if a dream proves that you've been here, how do we learn from that life? Or do you run from it? Because you know, deep inside your head, if you have lived this life before, that memory of that life before means that person had to die before you got here. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. It's stuff like this that you put on paper so that you can learn more about the inner core of who you are as a person, as an artist, as that traveler who's on a journey that's always going to be unexplained until you get there. This is The Daily Mess. So much has been written about making the business world a four-day work week. Being an admitted workaholic who has spent four decades in broadcasting and everything else connected, I disagreed with the four-day work week until COVID-19 and that lockdown shaped a newer relationship with life over stature. Four-day work weeks increase workplace productivity. 40% of most businesses in Europe operate on four days. So what are the studies saying, right? Well, studies show that four days lowers our level of burnout. When we hit high numbers, we face fatigue, anger, heart disease, alcohol, and substance abuse. Here's what the Mayo Clinic is saying about this. They point out that burnout isn't a medical diagnosis. Lack of control leads to one being burned out. Having control with my four-day work week that I live now has helped lead to a natural weight loss and lower blood pressure and a longer, better conversation with family and friends. I'm not always in that rush to get done. I understand loyalty and dedication at work. I get it. I put myself into those ruts. I wanted to make sure there was a difference being made. But the one thing that you've always got to keep on the outside of your heart, no matter how dedicated and loyal you are to the company that is giving you a paycheck every two weeks and they're giving you this lavish lifestyle or they're giving you more struggles than you can handle, no matter what you put into the veins of that company staying alive, remember, behind closed doors, they're always trying to come up with a way to fire you. And they're going to do it when you least expect it. I will never forget the major broadcast company that did that to me. They were in bankruptcy. It was time to clean house. I knew that my number was coming up, and I knew I needed to plan ahead of how I was going to react. Sure, I would be hurt, but don't let them see it. Sure, it was really going to make me angry, but don't let them see it. So when they looked at me and said, you know how the business is, well, we're not going to work together anymore. I looked right into the eyes of HR as well as my operation manager because I planned it out. I was ready. I knew what this was before I picked it up. I looked at both of them and I said, God is great. And I meant it because I knew at that point in time, I was a free man. I no longer had to put in a workaholics day and have other people live off my workaholicism in a way that they stole and I didn't gain. I was free to do it my way. So I want you to think about that. What is it going to take 
for you to get on a four day work week. It has been one of the greatest struggles of my life because when you are a workaholic, you want to work all the time. It is a fear of failure. It is a fear of not having what you once had. It's almost like pain management. You know what that is, right? The reason why you feel pain is because you're comparing it to the days when you were able to do different things. When you decide in that moment of now, that's like, look, I accept this pain. I'm going to be limited today, but I accept this pain. A four-day work week allows your mind, body, and soul to be replenished, to give you that time to find life, to find togetherness, to hold hands, to show off some public display, to take walks through a forest, to be you, not a representation of that company that you work for, but you. I'm Arrow, and that's The Daily Mess.